you alone. Stick to something you know about. Listen, my daughter was about your age. Then she met a guy like you. Now she's dead. You still believe in ghosts, pea brain? Whiskey you possess? Everyone out of the way of the bulldozer! Hello! Hello! Hello, and welcome to Hello, This is the Doomed Show. I'm Mr. Funny Guy, Richard, and I'm joined by my totally serious co host, Jeffrey. Jeffrey, don't make any jokes. Don't worry. Okay, thank God. Because I am the funny one, LOL, BRB, LMAO. I'm the glum one. <laughs> TTFN. <laughs> so, folks, it's another movie we're going to talk about. This time, it is a Jeffrey pick. It's a sick pick uh, from 1988. It's called <laughs> Twice Dead. Oh, shit. I watched Twice Bitten. Start oh, over. <laughs> I watched. Uh, Moon, moon struck. <laughs> moon struck two? <laughs> twice struck, once twice bitten. Struck. Oh. Let's see. Let me look for the twice dead VHS tape. Actually, you know what? I'm, I'm going to drop the uh, the trailer right here because this trailer is sweet. Here's the trailer for, for Twicky Deed. <laughs> it was a new beginning. We're almost there, kids. A move into a nice new neighborhood. According to the probate report, it was built in 1926. Where people are friendly. Hello, Robin Gates. Neighbors stop by. With a concerned police force. Yeah, it has to do with some old actor. Nobody's wanted to live in this hey, place. Hey, hey. A lot of nonsense, really. You know, we haven't heard anything for years. Just a little fixing up. You know, the word is that old Tyler place is um spooked. And it'll be a dream house for nightmares. You ever considered moving out? <laughs> Twice dead. Videocollector.co.uk. Hook me up. Oh, that's low res. That I can't read that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give me my glasses. Squint. Improvise. Make it. Uh, make it work. Uh, I think his his name is Mr. Billy. <laughs> okay, that's the Japanese tape. I'll have trouble reading that. <laughs> Once Sorry, again, I had to try. Why didn't I? Uh, yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just a coward. I like, have the Blu-ray. I could read that. No, no, I got it. I got it. Okay. I this is on Blu-ray. Ooh, yeah. I have the DVD. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. This is the Nelson Entertainment DVD VHS. Not a, not a DVD. <laughs> Meet the Cates family. They just inherited an old, dilapidated mansion located on the wrong side of Beverly Hills. Unfortunately, <laughs> this. Quote unquote fixer upper is already occupied. It's where a local street gang hangs out, and a restless ghost just hangs <laughs> from the rafters. As a territorial feud erupts, the ghost of Tyler Walker decides to take hides. Hides? <laughs> take sides. <laughs> Tyler, a one time actor who's been dead, I won't do that, for 50 years, has only been making local appearances in nearby mirrors. Buddy takes pity on the Cates' predicament and assists them in eliminating the group of prankish punks. What starts as a neighborhood battle ends up being a terrorizing tour de force, where the final curtain call is murder. Ooh. Twice that. 1988. Color. 91 minutes. Thriller. That's a little Thriller. too... Uh, no. Comedy. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a little too spoiler heavy for my tastes. Yeah, dude, that says a lot going on there. By the way, folks, spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, uh, this ghost, he's uh, taking sides and taking hides. <laughs> I can't believe I said hides. What the fuck? It's not wrong. But uh, this is from director Bill L. Dragon. 
and he's not dragging his ass around. He's working. No, he's Bert. Well, his name's Bert. What I say, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Bert dragging is way better. It's B E R T <laughs> dragon. Oh man, I'm dragging my butt around. I painted a bathroom, so I'm a little tired. We got this. Oh, we painted it pink. Oh, pink. Yeah. I it already it. had pink tile because, you know, 1949 house. Mm-hmm. You don't want to change that shit. No, 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 no. Uh, but no, the only other film that this uh, this Bert, <laughs> this uh, once once referred to as Bill by me, Bert L. Dragon, his other film he directed was one I've never seen, but I know of called Summer Camp Nightmare from 1986. Oh, I've seen that one. It's a, it's a favorite. Uh, oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. It's so good. Um I don't know if it's quite material for us on the show. It's not super duper horror, um, yeah. but it is. It's sort of like a, a <laughs> like a soci a more sociopathic Lord of the Flies at a summer camp. All right. Well, you know, we we did do uh, the face with two left feet, so genre is not a problem true. around here. True. True. It, uh, as long as it's not too serious. Oh Lord, no. <laughs> that movie I know about because my coworker. Uh, he couldn't find it. It was one of those movies he loved when he was a little kid and rented a bunch of times and I was able to hook him up with it. And I just perused it, the file when I got it from him. This is, it's still like stuck in VHS land. It, it sure is. Yeah. I've got a copy. Wow. Uh, let's get into this. Cause, uh, this movie, um, it, 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 it takes a turn, <laughs> you know, from, for me, because let's just say there was a point where I went. Oh, because I was struggling with my five p- pages of notes here. Uh, as usual, I took too many <laughs> notes. I don't know why I get crazy trying to figure out why you picked this. Uh, oh. I did not, not because it was bad, but because it yeah. was, um, you know, we'll get into that later. We'll get into that later. But this starts uh, with a little uh, voiceover action, which I is, is our, our titular uh, twice dead man. Named uh, Tyler Walker. Mm-hmm. He is uh, talking to his love and he's he's like, fulfill thy love or we both die. And he's talking to his, his lady friend. Um, and she obviously had too much to eat because Jeffrey, she is stuffed. <laughs> I mean, how can you uh, ask uh, why I would have choose this movie when like one of the main characters is a mannequin? <laughs> Uh, her name is we'll Myrna. Talk- yes, she's she's our she's um one of the best actresses in the movie. <laughs> yeah, she's. <laughs> I, I mean, some call her a little wooden. Um, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! Yeah, th- this is so. This is in old timey times. This is like 1930s. Well, yeah, it's a uh, we're we're told by a, a police officer who comes to Tyler's house in a little bit. He uh, has this great line of dialogue where he says. Unfortunate times, damn depression. Yeah, they they don't worry about not spelling it out for us immediately. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? He's been selling off all these uh, precious uh, pieces of furniture and art or whatever uh, in order to keep his house. And these guys are coming to arrest him for something. Well, they're coming to evict him. Um, oh, okay. Because the the guy with the incredible fur coat has just purchased this house. Oh, okay. He's, right. Okay, gotcha. And he Thank presumably you. is an ancestor of the Cates family, I would imagine. Maybe. Yes. He's he's the progenitor. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they're they're coming to kick him out. Uh, he <laughs> Tyler, that is Tyler Walker. Um, he, he is a mustache, a very thin mustachioed magician. He kind of looks like Ron Mail of Sparks, um, if he was Ooh, tiny. good call. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, and he, he goes, he like totally gets Jokerfied. He stabs his mannequin in the Aww. back after dancing with her in very, uh, limp fashion. Uh, he then, uh, hangs himself. Oh no, he can't, we, ah, oh, shucks, we can't evict him. He hanged himself. <laughs> Oh man, that that was gonna be hard work. Now we have to cut him down. <laughs> but yeah, he does the maniacal laughter very well. Um and I love he's always uh not always, but he's dancing to uh freaking dancing in the dark. Mm-hmm. Now dancing in the dark, Badu Badu Bo. I almost went into Strangers in the in the night <laughs> for a second there. That's fine. Same song. Oh, I didn't get to make my joke when they found him. They found out that they find that he's hung. 
himself from the from the ceiling. Nobody expected it. That's pretty good. It's pretty good. So we <laughs> cut to modern times. Cut to modern times, and uh, our family, the Cates. Uh, speaking of hard times, speaking of Great Depressions, 1988, huh? They're <laughs> they're having troubles. Uh, apparently, Dad has uh, gotten them into di- dire financial <laughs> straits. I want to know what he did. Did do? Are we told? He was one of those dot com millionaires. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, it. he was about a about a decade too soon. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so they're they're saved by inheriting a funeral home slash mansion, which uh, you know we saw their uh, their ancestral uncle man buying in the beginning of the movie, or just fucking repossessing. Yeah. <laughs> And as they're uh, driving through the neighborhood, getting closer and closer to the house, bump, 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 urban renewal is happening. <laughs> Remember, this is the uh, the wrong side of Beverly Hills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can tell it's bad because someone is like selling like laundry or it's selling sheets or selling rugs or something. And there's fences like I'm like, get out of there, people. It looks dangerous. Chain link fencing. Oh, my oh. God. Get out of there, Whitey. Um, so they get to the house. Oh, let, let's talk about the family a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> the sister, who uh, blew my mind a little bit, uh, she's freaking uh, Jill Whitlow from Night of the Creeps. Yes, she is. Holy shit. Um, you know, and ugh, Porky's. God damn it. Yeah, she's really not from much <laughs> else. Night of the Creeps is the big one. Uh, I mean, she's in some other big films but not in particularly big roles and then she pretty much disappeared at the end yeah. of the uh, uh really the turn of the decade gonna have to invent a time machine so i can go back in time and uh turn off the vcr when my parents are trying to watch porkies <laughs> and porkies 2 and porkies 3 with me when i was a kid it was freaking embarrassing wait you skip porkies 4 Wait, that's the one where it's uh, the little girl is the uh, is the new Damien. Yes. No, that's the right. one where Sam Neill is the little girl is Damien. <laughs> Damiena, Damiena. <laughs> anyway, so the, the 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 brother is Tom Breshnen. 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 I don't know. Rashnahan. I have no idea how to pronounce that. I don't know, but you did it good. <laughs> He's from The Brain, uh, which is a, a big one. Ed Hunt oh, classic. No, I still haven't seen that. Oh, yeah. He's the main character in that one. That's a very significant role for him. Um, Holy oh, shit. This looks so good. Yeah, you should definitely see The Brain. Um, he is also in Mirror Mirror, which I adore. Although I've I been meaning to watch that. I've never seen Mirror Mirror. Ooh, Mirror Mirror and Mirror Mirror 2 are both great. Definitely nice. check them out. Nice. And the parents are also there. <laughs> we got Sam Melville as dad. Uh, dad, dad sucks. <laughs> Dad's real yeah. bad. Um, he's not. He's not good at uh, not destroying the family. No. Uh, but this, yeah, this is uh, Sam Melville. Did a bunch of TV work. Dallas, Scarecrow, and Mrs. King. A Team, Airwolf, Dukes of Hazard, Fantasy Island, etc. He, et he plays a bear in the film Big Wednesday. What is Big Wednesday? Well, that's the surfing movie with uh, Gary Busey. Oh, I've never seen this. Oh, yeah. Big Wednesday. <laughs> now, is, is this when they go surfing? Yes, the surfing movie where they go surfing. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's Gary Busey, William Cat, and Jan Michael Vincent. What a, what a power trio that is. Ooh. Uh, Brooke Bundy, who plays Mom, uh, she was not, I repeat... Not on Married with Children, even though her name's Bundy. Uh, but she was, oh my god, 114 credits. Good lord. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street uh, Part 3, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4. They took clips of her and used it in the Fat Boys Are You Ready for Freddy music video. Do you, are you familiar with who that character is? Elaine from 3 and 4? Not off the top of my head yeah, at all. Yeah, me neither, yeah. Um, who is a crossover character between oh well it must be she must be involved with the the yeah, hospital i guess man that's so bad simon and i did that whole yeah. series <laughs> just gone out of my brain just flew out of my brain mm. 
More importantly, she was science teacher in the creepy movie Explorers, Ooh. where the kid is uh, romancing a freaking alien. Oops, spoiler mm. alert. God, that was Ethan Hawke? Holy yeah. shit. Uh, I love, unfortunately, we have a kitty in this movie. The kitties are great, <laughs> but the kiss kitty is marked for certain doom. But uh, Robin is very much in love with her kitty, and she's drawing her cat, which is awesome. <laughs> I love drawing portraiture of my furry babies. Is is the kitty is the kitty just named Kitty? Um, I think she calls its name, and I cannot recall what it was. Okay, that would be awesome if it was just Kitty. Well, uh, <laughs> the thing about uh, Robin is she seems a bit slow. Like she's <clears throat> she's not very like sharp or with it. And you know, I think this is a problem for the whole family. Um, <laughs> they, they seem to court these problems. Um. And they like fall asleep when they're, you know, they, here's another thing that I love in uh, movies that we cover, which is when characters are in mortal danger and fall asleep. <laughs> like, yes. and, and again, I think it's because none of them are smart enough to know or to like fully understand the situation that they're in. Not so much. Not so much. Uh, they, they get to the house, the mansion, and uh, the lost boys are sitting on the fucking porch. <laughs> And we got uh, immediately uh, our pal uh, Crip uh, pulls out a switchblade, and they're they're being real threatening. And <laughs> Dad says, "Scotty, go get the shotgun." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, let's let's look at our gang here. We got Jonathan Ch- Chapin, 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 Chapin. Uh, he everyone loves him as good old Mike in Halloween Five. He was uh, Tina's awesome boyfriend. Mm-hmm. By awesome, I mean a uh, total nightmare. <laughs> but you know what? Tina made good choices, so we can't we can't falter too much. Um, we got a guy named Silk, who I wrote down as Zip about 5,000 times in my notes. So if I call Silk Zip, it's because I wrote down Zip. This is Christopher Burgard. Yeah, uh, uh, Christopher Burgard is, is doing his best... Well, he's he's halfway between because you're right. I mean, they've got total Lost Boys vibes, and he's got the hair for it. He's very yes. much trying to be uh, David from Lost Boys, but at the same time, he's also a lot like um, Tim Van Patten in Class of 1984. Ooh, he's that got is true. Yeah. Yes, this film fits perfectly in that subgenre of like um, like punk gangs from the 80s films which i just adore completely because it's like a total ragtag group of people who would not hang out together no they're just no. like different variations of what culture thought punks were uh no. they're gonna be like overly violent in any situation and stuff that would land them in freaking not just juvenile hall <laughs> but like probably in the electric chair definitely and the cops will always be like well, nothing we can do just a bunch of kids uh, this dude was in a movie I enjoyed very much called Sinjanor or uh, Sinjanor mm. from uh, 1990. Uh, that was a uh, sequel to the the director made like a proto version of his own movie. Yeah, like he remade it later. I'm trying to remember what it was called. <laughs> Scared to death. Oh my god! Mm. There's a movie from 1980 called Scared to Death. It's a sci-fi horror movie with a synthetic creature that kills people. It was a William Malone movie. And then somebody somehow took the same monster and then made Sinjanor in like eight years later. Mm -hmm. And I've heard, yeah, they're totally, they're totally, it's supposed to be the same beast. Okay. But I don't know how the films are related other than <laughs> the word Sinjanor and the creature is the same. Okay. I can't figure out. I mean, it was the special effects guy. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I'm glad I took us down that tangent. Uh, uh, let's see who else is in. We got a guy named Stoney who's in the gang. Mm-hmm. We got the, 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 the heavy gentleman, the large guy named uh, Melvin, who uh, is the most pleasing character. To whom? To to driving motorcycles up uh, the up the vaginas of fake women. Ugh. He's he's got issues. You should look into that. I think he's got a problem. <laughs> but yeah, this is uh, Travis McKenna, who's a bunch of freaking movies, and he sometimes plays. He played a character named Bubba 
in the Dukes of Hazard reunion. <gasps> he played a guy named Brad Pitt in uh, nah. Step by Step, the TV show. I like that. <laughs> I just, I just the other day bought the first four seasons of Step by Step. <laughs> nice, good on you. <gasps> he was in Dead Women in Lingerie. I've actually seen this. <laughs> he played Fat Clown in Batman Returns. Wow, now that's that's a career making move right there. Uh, we got Jolene Lutz as Candy. I had a lot of uh, trouble trying to f- get her name because I could. I just kept waiting for someone to say her name. She's. I, I, I wrote her down. I, I wrote it. I wrote it her down as Gang Girl <laughs> until someone finally said her freaking name. This movie has a problem with erasing girl gang members. That's right. That's right. They don't have their own personality. <laughs> anyway, so the cops show up and, you know, kind of scare these guys off. Crip, our buddy, who just has immediately fallen in love with Robin, he just keeps staring at her throughout the movie and going, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful. Uh, but s- the cop sees him like checking out freaking Robin. He goes, She's not your type, Crip. She hasn't murdered anybody yet. I feel like there's a big, like, dot, dot, dot before yet. Yeah. (laughs) And also, uh, how does the cop know his type? That's a little different. Uh, The cops watch these gangs take off and go, bunch of animals. (laughs) I think the cop has looked at Crip's um, uh, (laughs) uh, uh, Tinder profile. That's how. (laughs) Yeah. I'm really into girls who have murdered people. So go inside, and the house is completely trashed. Um, Scotty immediately sees uh, the ghost of Tyler in the mirror. (laughs) But that's okay, because Scotty likes pizza. Mm, He loves pizza. It's really, it's like his Achilles heel. (laughs) Dude, especially when it's freaking drugged. (laughs) But uh, yeah, he, he gets all the choices that the... The the shady side of uh, Beverly Hills has to offer, offer, and he chooses pizza. Whatever. It's the safest so, bet. So, what's what's that? It's the safest bet. Yeah. Do you ever have, have a Gumby pizza? There used to be in Tampa a place called Gumby's Pizza. It was terrible. No. Yep. <laughs> was this a chain? I think so. Or it was just a, a shitty Tampa place. Yeah, I've never <laughs> heard of this before. We had five star. That was another shitty place we had. Yeah, they're terrible. I think they're gone now. Hope, God, I hope they're gone. These were like places that made Little Caesars look classy. See, we've got Little Caesars, Domino's, Papa John's, Pizza Hut. We got those chains. I've never heard of these other ones. uh, We got Marco's. Marco's is okay. Marco's. What? That's like this might be regional chains. They might be regional. There's some things you should know about Gumby's Pizza. You can order as late as you want because Gumby's is open late every day. Keep your spare change. Gumby's accepts checks and credit cards on delivery orders. You'll love Gumby's Pokey Sticks, Pepperoni Rolls, and Chicken Wings. Plus, our pizza is fresh made to order with 100% natural ingredients. Wash your food down with ice-cold Pepsi products. Gumby's makes your need to chow down effortless. Get your best deals at Gumby'sPizza.com. Order an extra-large three-topping pizza for just $10.99. Scotty hears sounds and, and goes exploring, and he finds a locked room, and uh, he's whacking away at that door. He's just whacking it, but then when he gives up, the door creaks open, letting him in. Like, don't, just be nice. Be nice. Whisper he, to the door. Uh, this is the room where all the magic happened. and uh, <laughs> Literally. <laughs> the noose is still swinging from the ceiling, and we've got a little... Uh, <laughs> little um well actually it's not an altar yet but i think scotty's gonna take all of the tyler walker memorabilia and make an altar later <laughs> you gotta worship worship your idols uh, and then he opens the door the po- the uh <laughs> he opens the door and the mannequin falls out mirna it's like hello scotty I'm yours now i cannot Take believe care. that the man in the incredible fur coat did not sell myrna <laughs> And the the noose. Why would you just leave these perfectly good items? Tyler Walker fan club, man. Yeah. There's a poster of Tyler, the actor, and uh, I kept thinking he was a film actor, but no, he was just a stage actor. He wasn't ready for the talkies yet. So the next day at school, um, <laughs> I'm very confused as to what kind of a school this is. 
<laughs> because Scotty is taking a special effects makeup class. And Robin is taking some vague science or biology class where she's uh, dissecting frogs. Dissecting and live frogs, by the yes. way, that have just Very been chloroform. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the chloroform and the special effects makeup are going to be very important later. <laughs> Little did I know. Like, I had a feeling that the special <laughs> effects thing was going to be important. But, like, are they in college? I don't high think so. They're high schoolers. This, this you know, they just do things differently in Beverly Hills. But, yes, no, everything is telegraphed far in advance in this film. Uh, this is real, like, screenwriting 101. Like, right after this, we're going to get Chekhov's frayed electric blanket cord coming up. Like, everything. <laughs> Even the pizza, in some ways, is foreshadowed, that's is it true, not? That's true. That's <laughs> true. I love it. <laughs> no surprises. I don't want any surprises. Oh, boy. Um, Scotty he takes a moment to shoot some b-ball with our friend Petey. And uh, this is this PD is played by none other than uh, Todd Bridges. I love PD of, uh, of uh, what you call it, uh, um, Different Strokes fame. Mm-hmm. Which um, nothing says uh, child actor nightmare quite like the uh, the trilogy of main main kid actors mm-hmm. from <laughs> Different Strokes. Man, I think about them a lot. It's sad. <laughs> Petey is great. I think Petey is the un- unsung hero of this movie. Oh, he's great. You know, till he dies. <laughs> uh, but the, the so they start playing uh, some basketball. Uh, Crip is sneaking up because the whole gang, of course, is just shows up, and uh, Crip again says to Robin, "Beautiful," and uh, they start to shove each other and get in each other's faces, and Melvin calls Petey some jambone motherfucker. I is that a slur? I don't know. I, w- I, I hope not. I, I wrote but... that down with being like, what does that mean? I'm, I'm not going to look it up because I I want to just believe it's not. It's like some slang they made just for the movie. It's <laughs> uh, it's apparently a, a hand that you can play in euchre. Cool. <laughs> so See, I don't know. I, dude, do the so hand job. Weird. A fight breaks out. <laughs> And uh, Scotty and Robin escape on a motorbike, which I was like, what? Whose motor? Oh, that was Melvin's motorbike. And yes. uh, at the right before they escape, someone yells, yeah, it's payback time. <laughs> and I wrote in my notes, who the fuck yelled that? <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's got payback? That was what? That was us. We were yelling it. So the kids get back home and they park the bike out front. And of course, uh, Melvin is very upset to find his bike in front of their house. I mean, again, speaking to my theory here of them not being particularly bright, this is the worst plan you could possibly have. I'm stealing the bike and I'm leaving it right in front of my house just to remind you that I stole it and that this is where I live. Well, you know, you're you're marked anyway because Crip loves you. So mm. there is no escape from Crip. <laughs> They're having some trouble with the power at the house. So mom sends... Our boy Scotty down to check the fuses, and he finds something important, very important for this movie. And uh, mom and sis are upstairs, like listening to this weird sound. What is that? What is that sound? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, a door opens, and ba ba! It's Scotty and a dumb waiter, which uh, you know, pretty advanced. It's an electric elevator dumb waiter. It's not just a rope and pulley bullshit. This is true. Some. Uh, fancy stuff <laughs> pre pre depression money built this thing that's right <laughs> the best thing that your stage career can buy <laughs> so um scotty is 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 fawning over his his tyler altar he now has like a lot of us do we have we have a tyler walker altar with our posters <laughs> and our our mannequins listen he's trying to start a fan club dude that's yeah. A lot of people nowadays struggle with socializing, and this is just one avenue you should explore. <laughs> he wants to make friends at school. This is how he's going to do it. <laughs> uh, that night, uh, Scotty gets uh, Freddy Kruegered by some rope. Uh, the, the the noose apparently is loose. <laughs> the noose is loose, <laughs> and it wraps around him. And, and uh, his parents come <laughs> in and go, "Boy, you must have had some nightmare getting tangled up in that rope like that." <laughs> 
he says to his parents, it's just puberty. <laughs> Are you serious? No. Is that what he says? No. <laughs> that would have been great. <laughs> See, you should write this. I should I should have written this. Oh, well. You were young. Mm-hmm. So, uh, freaking uh, the next night, <laughs> Scotty's at the library and, holy shit, Petey works at the library. And he gets him all the info on that Tyler Walker house. <laughs> he gets him uh, what he calls some spicy history. Because he says that the Tyler place, and I love this, is quote unquote spooked. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I bet some Adams family freaking moved in there. And he's like, <laughs> and then Scotty tells him, oh, I, I actually, that was my family that moved in. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> and uh, he discovers that uh, freaking, there's a rumor, there's a rumor that uh, Tyler and their great aunt, uh, Myrna, had an illegitimate kid together. So Tyler was so in love with their aunt that he, like, has a mannequin of her because she went and married somebody else. <sighs> this is always happening to uh, <laughs> amateur actors and magicians. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, that never works out. No. Uh, Robin, uh, oh, now Robin sees Tyler in the mirror that night and she wakes up and she goes looking for her cat. And unfortunately the kitty is nailed to the door. <laughs> well, you know, that's how you win a girl's heart. <laughs> yep. So, um, <laughs> she gets attacked by ghouls in Halloween masks and <laughs> this because these guys are wearing masks that will free them from any persecution of any crimes that they might have committed on this <laughs> night. Listen, it was just a bunch of ghoulies. We don't, we can't find ghoulies. <laughs> Every October, crimes happen and we can't solve them. So, uh, so I'll tell the you ghost that, wake. Oh, I wanted to tell that? you that in, um, in the on the Blu-ray, the Blu-ray is uh, taken from the only film print. That oh my God. that uh, uh, Scream Factory could find, and there is this. There is one scene in the film, and it's actually this scene where they could not find the uh, you know actual film elements. It wasn't included in the print, so they had to okay. they had to use uh, a video source instead. And it looks amazing because it's like right after she comes out and she sees uh, the cat and then they're all just sort of hanging out on the porch in their masks. And it like cuts to this lower grade video footage, uh, you know, videotape that that looks like so trippy. And it's actually like kind of spooky. Um, it it kind of adds to it, honestly. And it only it only lasts like 20 seconds under that even and then switches back to film. So, OK, because I yeah, have cool. the DVD that's the double feature with the evil. Mm-hmm. And I don't think mine switches to that. It might just skip that shot. Maybe. Yeah, I want to see that. That's cool. <laughs> While she's being menaced by uh, by Crip and S- Zip, although, <laughs> a.k.a. Silk, uh, the ghost wakes up Scotty by shaking his bed to wake him up. Scotty hears the ruckus outside, gets up, wakes up Dad, and they all run out there with the shotgun. <laughs> Before Dad comes out, though, Scotty gets the shit kicked out of him mm-hmm. by the gang. He's a good fighter. <laughs> uh, that night, after uh, the gang is scared off, Scotty thanks the poster, and the poster says, No problem, kid. Happy to be of service. <laughs> I really like your sister. Wow, 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 wow. Wow, wow, wee. <laughs> uh, the, so Robin is telling the cops about what happened. And they're like, these guys were wearing masks. They're they're freaking, uh, what do you call it? Criminal masterminds. <laughs> she shows them portraits. She draws portraits of each of the gang members. And the cop is like, that's no help. <laughs> well, you, what are you going to, you want us to arrest Frankenstein's monster? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's so good. <laughs> so uh, later, Dad is trying to teach Scotty how to shoot, uh, but Scotty hates guns. So uh, Dad does that old trick of questioning his son's masculinity, which inspires <laughs> Scotty to take the shotgun and shoot up a car at the junkyard. Are you even my son or are you just a sissy? And just to plant this firmly in the 80s, it says, Scotty says, I guess it's open season on Japanese imports. <laughs> like, I wanted him to look at the camera and be like, remember that movie where the guys had to work with the Japanese to sell more cars? 
Wasn't that crazy? The movie with Michael Keaton? <laughs> but he didn't do that. I don't remember the name of that movie, but I know what movie you're talking about. What's it called? Japanese car no, movie. No, no, no. Something's in it. Guy's mm. in it. It's a movie. It's okay. Everybody <laughs> knows what movie we're talking about. The parents have to go back to their, their home. Oh, wait. <laughs> what home? Yes. The, the, they have to go back to Boulder, Colorado to save the freaking house and uh, to, sa- to save, well, just themselves from financial ruin. <laughs> I guess I wrote in my notes, to save them from more? More financial, financial ruin. <laughs> sure. Scotty is uh, working on his hearse, trying to get this this hearse that, because uh, of course, the house, after it got uh, bought by their uh, freaking uh, uncle, he turned it into a funeral home, which is why there's a hearse and freaking coffins in the basement. Uh, so he's been working on this hearse and the ghost helps him get it running again. <laughs> Thanks. The gang, the gang shows up and uh, taunts Robin because uh, uh, Crip looks at her and goes, Beautiful. <laughs> then the car chase ensues as they, they try to take off in this freaking hearse. And uh, the crit pops in some sick metal, bro, to inspire them. Oh, yeah. I think I wrote down the bands. I meant to write down the bands. They were like white lightning <laughs> and white something. Let's see if it has the soundtrack. Oh, yeah, it does. It does. It does. There's there's a couple metal bands. Let's see. Uh, one's called White Lightning, aka White Sister. What? And the other, yeah, and the other one's called Wild Cats, which I guess isn't like white, but it's White Cats, white aka cats. Sorcery. How did they get that credit? Why do both of these bands have two names? Oh, okay. White Lightning was also known as White Sister. Wildcats was known as sorcery. Yes. I am confused. What is going on? Which one of now them my... did the, the Twice Dead theme song? Did one of them do it or somebody else? No, it was, it was, uh, oh, it was another band called Poor St. Christopher. Oh, that's a great name. And that's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, by the way, folks, this film <laughs> has a freaking theme song. Yeah, yeah. You know, Gyra Jets has two names. Our <laughs> other name is Jarge. That's, that's the code name for our band is for fans of from Gyro Jets. Just call us Jarge. And uh, your third name upcoming, uh, White Dead. <laughs> we try, we're trying to get White Lightning, but the band might not let us have it. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, it would just be like pasty White Lightning. For me, I, don't, I don't go out in the sun much. Um, in order to lose the, the gang in their car... Scotty has Robin drive while he jumps in the back and he flings a freaking coffin out at them and the gang crashes their car on the train tracks and uh, freaking Silk, a.k.a. Zip, uh, stand there and uh, he and he and uh, Crip just stare menacingly and I'm like, maybe get your car off the train tracks there like that's that could be a thing. It's a miracle no one died. It that yeah, that would have been really bad if the gang had died. Then the movie would be over. And it would be <laughs> wouldn't... even worse because there's only one coffin. Oh no. Well, they could share. Mm. There's probably some like uh, unresolved feelings between them. It's fine. <sighs> That's why you join a gang to meet lovers. So you're saying it's like it's like a clown coffin. God help me, yes. Be buried in a clown coffin. <laughs> I don't want to be alone. Oh, boy. So that night, of course, we get more of Crip watching Robin, uh, her her silhouette, her sexy silhouette from the yard, from the, her window. And he's like, beautiful. <laughs> Man, the, I mean, Jonathan Chapin, when he got the script for this, he must have just been like, yes, I can just go back to bed. I don't, <laughs> I've got this. <laughs> <laughs> uh candy is is very upset that uh she, she does he doesn't want her she says uh, about robin she says she's just a little girl <laughs> uh crip freaking yells at her and then decides he's gonna break in uh so he breaks in the house sneaks into robin's room and <gasps> robin has a knife in her throat 
the rest of the gang shows up, they're arguing in the street, then they all decide, let's fucking do this, and they break into the house. The door op well, before they break in, the door opens and a creepy voice invites them in. So Melvin decides to drive his motorbike straight into the frickin' oh. front door. Oh boy. Um he he there's a figure <laughs> waving a flashlight at him, which makes him mad. So he charges this person with the flashlight, and there's a rope pulled taut across the living room, which catches him in the throat. It's amazing. <laughs> Where was Melvin raised? A motorcycle barn? <laughs> He doesn't know about the carcinogens that those freaking motorcycles <laughs> kick out. And then uh, Zip, Stony, and uh, Candy all go inside. They split up. And of course, Tyler Walker's signature tune, Dancing in the Dark, starts playing. <laughs> Menacing. Love it. And uh, she finds... A, <laughs> there's, a, there's a red spotlight in Tyler Walker's room. And the red spotlight is on the record player, and she lifts open the lid, and there's freaking Melvin's big old head spinning around on the record. Oh, you know, boy. Melvin heads do some really bad damage to your needle. Don't recommend placing them there. Yes, listen to the Melvins. On your record player, not, not Melvin's Melvin. head. Yeah, it's not good. They're di I, I can see why you're confused, but they are different things. Yep. Uh, so now it's Silk, a.k.a. Zip's turn, uh, but no Melvin head this time. But instead, he finds the lady mannequin and uh, freaking... Uh, what is this? What the hell does my notes say? Finds the lady mannequin and girl gang's body holding her own severed head. Yeah. <gasps> but Jeffrey, this was all a gag. This was all a setup. Mm -hmm. A wildly impossible, elaborate <laughs> setup. That involves a, a whole lot of uh, quick uh, molding of heads and fabricating of, of <laughs> bodies and clothes. And well, of course, a lot of smuggling of chloroform. Yes. Well, remember, our buddy Robin had drawn portraits oh. of all of the gang. So she <laughs> had been spending the weeks between the beginning when this movie started and now sculpting heads just in case this shit happened and she uh <laughs> went on later to design the ghoulies from this film series ghoulies oh yeah good for her so then um freaking silk aka zip gets knocked out in the dumb waiter and then freaking uh scotty puts a makeup <laughs> appliance on him on, on his crotch which will come in which will come up later very important Talk, 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 Twice dead. One, two, three dead. I counted them. So he applies a makeup appliance to our buddy Zip slash Silk. So you're a typical dick burster. <laughs> Stony finds him. Stony finds uh, Silk. And right then, a prehistoric chicken penis monster jumps out of... <laughs> of silk's crotch <laughs> and this makes stony run and jump out the fucking window <laughs> it's so good and the slow-mo is so nice that it has that little flicker effect mm -hmm. from the can the camera being cranked at a different mm -hmm. speed and you get those oh it's so funny oh my god <laughs> okay jeffrey this is confession time <laughs> this is why i was confused as to why you picked this movie up until here now there was some weird stuff in the dialogue <laughs> and i was like okay this is a little different but the setup with this gang is so generic and so like by the numbers you know like escalation of yeah of shit happening and like Oh, it's this is gonna get real, you know. But then it takes this turn. And this is not the only turn this movie takes. This no. is the first turn yeah. where the movie's letting you know 
anything is possible. <laughs> because this shit blew my mind. Middle of the movie. This is not the fucking, like, I guess it's not the middle middle, but it's, it's far into the movie before they bust out the, uh, the, the splatter gore effects. Oh my god. Bust out the penisaurus. So, yeah, the movie starts like a class of 1984. It starts like the new kids. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's what it's the closest to. Yeah. Uh, and then it moves into a very different territory where, for one, we, we have the, the, the sort of, um, tables turned in a very humorous way here, but that, that still kind of fits into that mold, uh, because we know that they're going to get it back 10 times worse. But then when they do, it goes in that very wild direction that we will get to momentarily. Nice. Nice. Uh, after this, after this experience, uh, fricking bro and sis are, uh, they're bonding. It's very cute. And they're, they're like congratulating each other, patting each other on the back. Like, man, we nailed this shit. <clears throat> and it's just so good. Uh, <laughs> the next morning, Melvin is in a dumpster, uh, being, it's just sound asleep, dreaming pleasant Melvin dreams. And then he gets dumped into a garbage truck, presumably. <laughs> it's it's a little confusing. I mean, that's how I wake up every morning. So this yeah. is not particularly strange. You're like... I've the... never seen myself represented in film before. So this was nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not since Ghoulies. <laughs> not since Ghoulies. Uh, when the ghoulie came out of the toilet on the poster. <laughs> you bit him in the ass. Our pal Silk, a.k.a. Zip, wakes up cuddling with his own chicken. <laughs> and it scares him. Yeah, you ever just wake up and you get scared by your own penisaurus? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Freaking uh, Candy's in the car. She's she's locked in the car. And he's trying to get her to open the door. And she freaks out when she sees his chicken dick. But then, <laughs> but then she just starts laughing at him. And he's trying to, like, remove it. And it just looks really obscene. <laughs> Because he's just slamming it against the window of the car. And she, she says, what are you doing? Beating it off? She calls it a penisaurus. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, Scotty is having a little heart-to-heart -heart with his, uh, his Tyler Walker poster. And we find out that uh, Aunt Myrna uh, died in an asylum. Uh, and uh, I guess this makes the Tyler Walker poster sad. <laughs> And then uh, that night, uh, there's a if pizza. These posters could talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that night, they're hanging out with Petey. Petey's like, hey, remember I'm in this movie? I gotta be <laughs> back on long. set. I gotta be back on set to whatever show I'm doing now. And uh, he, the, the plate. A pizza delivery guy shows up, and uh, but he's in on it, man. He brings them free pizza, mm. a carton of soda. Which I've never seen in any film. <laughs> they actually don't bring them a bottle of soda. He brings a carton of soda. Mm -hmm. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my life. That's just how they do it on the wrong side of Beverly Hills. <laughs> on the wrong side of the tracks. I, I do have to correct something, though, because even Ooh. though he's about to, like, scam them with drugged pizza. Yes. Uh, it is not free. He charges them $5. Oh, that's right. <laughs> because the whole thing was, he's like, this is the last of my rounds. I'll give you a deal, bro. And yeah, while they're talking and making this deal, he slips a, some gum in the lock of the front door so the door won't be locked. Mm -hmm. So outside, uh, Petey's like, I got to get out of here. So he leaves, even though he spends his last minutes on Earth <laughs> warning these two idiots that they have escalated the situation with the gang. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he leaves and the gang who's waiting outside sees him. Gets gives chase and fucking kills Petey. Mm. Like they brought him back in the movie just long enough to kill him. They run him over. And uh, the one guy says, he's dead. And then I think it might be Silk who says, you gotta choose your friends wisely. <laughs> and then and then Crip says, beautiful. <laughs> just looking at the freaking corpse. So Scotty eats the stupid ass drugged pizza like a stupid idiot. And, uh, of course, you know, the gang is, the gang is in the house. They're back in their old hangout. <laughs> Wait, so, I mean, I think we do have to at least consider the, the possibility that the pizza was not drugged. It just makes him okay. sleepy. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, my tummy's all full. I go oh. to sleep now. <laughs> Bless his heart. It's full of, uh, tryptophan. 
<laughs> so it's turkey pizza. Scotty had this whole thing. His dad was trying to make sure he had the shotgun at all times since the parents weren't home. So Scotty reaches for the trusty shotgun, but he's too scared to, you know, blow freaking uh, zip away. And of course, uh, Crip has Robin hostage and they're threatening to kill good old, uh, good old Scotty. So Robin's like, I'll do anything you want. And Crip's like, yo, yo, you heard that? All right, we're done here. Leave him alone. We are done here. I'm going to take this woman who just said she'll do anything we I want upstairs. But Crip is having a little change of personality here. Like, yeah. Crip seems a little different. He's like he's in the house. All of a sudden growing a pencil thin mustache. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's uh, wearing he's he's wearing a freaking tuxedo for one thing. <laughs> like, he just found the uh Tyler Walker special, one size fits all. He's uh, speaking more than one word. Yeah. Everything's changing for Chris. They should have had a shot of him finding that tux, but whatever. It's fine. This it wouldn't it wouldn't make the movie any less strange. I would I would honestly prefer like a uh, like a, a Paul Nashy werewolf transition where like <laughs> he just grows the tux. <laughs> Whoa. Oh my god. That's in uh that's in the fan the fan edit. <laughs> Bring back the the tux cut. I don't know. Did we make this joke? Did we make a Snyder cut <laughs> yeah, joke yeah, yeah, last yeah. time? Oh, yeah, bring God. back Zack Snyder's Ooh. tux cut. Man, you know what it's called? It's called Twitter. It's what's happening. So, uh, good old um, Crip takes Robin upstairs. Scotty gets handcuffed to a chair. And uh, Melvin uses this time to drive his uh, motorbike up the crotch of Aunt Myrna's uh, stuffed likeness. Yeah, and let's say uh, Ghost Tyler Walker is very displeased no, with yeah. this behavior. He no like it. So that's when the mirror shatters. Upstairs, Crip gives his earrings to Robin. Um, he's somewhat creepy in this sequence. <laughs> and he tells her about the earrings. They were always yours. Sure. <laughs> I was just holding on to them for you. Oh, thank you. There's a gang couple who are going to go make out in the house. These two characters slipped into the movie yeah. so, like, easily. <laughs> They're like auxiliary gang members. Right. They're not real committed to the whole home invasion thing. But they're gonna they're gonna use someone's bed, probably their parents' bed, uh, to to have sex on. But one of them is is quite famous, I think. Uh, <gasps> really? Yeah, like I recognized him immediately. Um, he's uh he's listed as just gang member. I guess he doesn't have a name. He's Raymond Cruz, um, and he's been in ninety things, including oh a bunch God. of big things like Alien Resurrection, uh, Under Siege, what? Clear what? and Present Danger. Yeah, that's he's, brilliant. He's still working today. Um, Good for him. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's definitely he's one of those one of those actors you just recognize. Yeah, he's got his his girlfriend is uh, I believe his girlfriend is named Tammy, and she was in uh, she's Charlie Spradling. She was in The Blob, Wild at Ooh. Heart, The Doors, Interview, uh, not Interview the Vampire, <laughs> to Sleep with a Vampire. <gasps> was she the main girl in that? Nina. Holy shit, have you seen To Sleep with a Vampire? I have not. Looks it's good. It's fucking horrible. Oh. Holy <sighs> shit. Wow, it is one of the um uh-oh, we didn't make it to the 90s so good movies like it feels like an old script that was sitting around for a while and Ooh. dude, it's just long sequences of her stripping. Well, I'll definitely Just, be watching this. And it's the, a it's a Concord movie too. Oh boy. Yeah. The lead guy is the worst actor. Like bless his heart. I can't <laughs> tell if he's not trying or trying super hard to be this <laughs> ageless, bitter, crusty old vampire who's just going to turn this stripper into a vampire, I guess. Uh, dude. Okay. Let me know what you think. I hate For it. Sure. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> Woo. And you know, I don't hate a lot of stuff. <laughs> I'm not like, eh, this sucks. But that was bad. 
Um, she's also in Twin Peaks. Oh, jeez. She plays the character Swabby in uh, uh, season one, episode three. I have no idea who that is. Man. See, Simon and I covered that, too. Don't remember Swabby. <laughs> and she was in uh, Wild at Heart as well, yeah. Wow. Yeah, man. Love it. The couple's up there, you know, getting cozy in the parents' bed, and we cut to Stony and Candy playing with the dumb white dumb waiter, and it looks like Candy's about to get her head cut off, but instead, Stony gets it with the dumb waiter. Crushed. Yes. And then the ghost uh, forces Melvin off of his bike and then kills him mm-hmm. with his own motorbike. At two Kawasaki. <laughs> this all happens very quickly, by the way, too. Dude, um, we're, yeah, we're in the home stretch of this fucking yeah. crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> so that's when um, Crip is obviously possessed and he's making a uh, freaking uh, Robin dance with him in the dark. They're dancing in the dark. Mm. And then we see Tina and wh- whoever, uh, Tina, uh, Tammy and whoever, the guy from all those movies. Uh, They're having sex, but then he gets electrocuted, which (laughs) is amazing because he doesn't conduct electricity, or so we think, because as he's getting electrified by the lamp or whatever, she is enjoying herself, like really loving like (laughs) this whole electrified scene here. But it does turn out that she was being electrocuted too, so they both die. Yeah, but they had a really great orgasm. As oh. it was happening. Yes. And that's um, all you can really hope for in this life. And my favorite part is that, like, like they were already sweaty, so that was helping conduct some electricity. But the yep. thing that really sealed the deal was they spilled their 40 ounces, um, <laughs> and that, that just added the, the necessary lubrication. <laughs> that's right. They... <laughs> They poured one out for their dead homies, and that <laughs> sealed their fate. Well, th- they were the dead homies, ironically. <laughs> Pouring one out for themselves. Hey, man, life is short. We might die soon. <laughs> Pour one out for me. Uh, Silk finds uh, good old uh, Stoney's head crushed in the dumbwaiter, not pleased. Um, he goes after Scotty with an axe. And the cops come, and there's a magical shotgun trick by the ghost. And this scene was, like, shockingly violent. So the cops have come, and Silk is trying to, like, basically turn himself in. Like, I give up! But the ghost is forcing him to point the shotgun at the cops. Mm -hmm. And then, before the cops shoot him, though, he just turns the shotgun to himself and blows his own brains out. And based on the special effects stuff, I thought this was going to be really, really disgusting. I thought, like, we were going to have a, a head vaporized here. But <laughs> yeah. no, just, just it's still disturbing when his, he blows the back of his head off. But man. Yeah. And then he, like, he, uh, we get some uh, real good uh, twitch acting from Silk as he, like, yes. as the camera lingers and he Dude. passes into the unknown. It's brutal. His death and frickin' Stoney's death are the most, like, oh, shit, that's fucked yeah. up. I love yeah. it. <laughs> Tone problems. We need it. Crip wakes up in time because he's about to recreate the night where uh, our pal actor walker man stabbed his own mannequin in the back but just before he's about to stab robin he he like presses the button and his switchblade stops being a freaking knife and just you know pretend stabs her well i i thought it was the ghost doing that because the blade like falls out i don't think it sucks back in doesn't it fall out which is weird see i couldn't tell if it was the ghost doing it or him coming to the realization i don't want to kill this lady see i think Hmm. he's gone for some reason the ghost just like really seems to be on their side um remember i mean he's taking sides and hides sorry i was yawning (laughs) (laughs) i don't know we're on video for each other because we're sick and (laughs) creepy like that we like to look at each other while we're talking but i was like making a a face apparently of me yawning and laughing at the same time (laughs) After he doesn't stab Robin, then our, our pal Crip gets hung by the the old noose. They gotta stop, they cut that thing down, man. It's a, it's a real hazard. Scott, Scotty checks on Robin, and uh, she wakes up and goes, I had an awful, awful dream. 
<laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, the next day, the, the, the cops are... The cops. The next day, mom and dad are home from their Colorado trip. And dad is super skeptical about everything that happened while they were gone. It's freaking hilarious. He totally blames drugs for all of these <laughs> horrific deaths that occurred in their house, including yeah. a couple who's killed in their own bed. <laughs> hey, he's like, it seems reasonable. There were drugs, alcohol. These There's things a logical happen. explanation for everything. <laughs> he, he also says, uh, well, it's a good thing that they're all dead. Saves me the trouble. <laughs> yes, what a tough guy. Man, he, I got chills when he said that line. <laughs> well, imagine that movie. Oh, boy. So outside, uh, Scotty meets Tammy out by the street. Tammy's not wearing her girl gang outfit anymore. She's dressed like a prep. Like <laughs> this a is one. Kid. This is like one day, right? Yeah, this is the next day. <laughs> She's decided to turn a new leaf. Good for her. I was actually glad she didn't get gotten. I liked yeah. her. Uh, so he, he hands she hands him a notebook full of information about Crip's uh, lineage because apparently she was friends with him the most. <laughs> like she, maybe she had a crush on him. I'm not sure, but it has the uh, the info dump that Crip's father was Tyler and Myrna's I- illegitimate son. <laughs> this is what we call lore. Man, yeah, that's that's the uh, the Bible of the movie. Is that yeah. what's what she brought up? <laughs> is, uh, if this was successful, we would have gotten that in the prequel. Oh my god! And that's the thing. Where's the sequel to this good stuff here? God knows it's gonna set one up. We got Robin and Scotty in the hearse driving along, and we get a stinger where uh, good old Tyler Walker jumps out of the freaking coffin and gets her. But it was a dream stinger, and Scotty walks in like it's okay, sis. It was just a dream. It's all right. And he, he takes her down to the kitchen, I guess, to get her some warm milk or something. But there, <laughs> stabbed in her pillow, is that knife. <sighs> and then we see our pal Crip in the mirror, <laughs> dressed like a zombie version of uh, Tyler Walker. <laughs> Going, ha 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 ha. <laughs> oh, and that's the end, man. Woo. Beautiful. God, this movie, dude. And then we get the theme song. We get the freaking Twice Dead theme song. Twice Dead. <laughs> God, dude. This I'm sorry I took too many notes, but I think it all worked out. It's all we, good. We covered it. And we're we're basically the greatest podcast that ever covered Twice <laughs> Dead. I mean, this is a movie of of much growth. Um we died twice while watching it. Um <laughs> yes, we, we, we see it. <laughs> Uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Scott gets validated by his father who calls him a true hero because he may or may not have killed all of these punks. Uh, <laughs> he's even called a hero. There's, a, there's a great moment at the end where his dad says like, you're a hero. And, 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 uh, Scott just says, Petey was the only hero, which I agree. There's only one hero in this movie and his name is Petey. Dude. And, yeah. Yeah. What a shat! Like what a freaking like <clears throat> cheated him so bad. It's so <laughs> stupid. But you know that's like um, what was it um, Carlton, the dude who played Carlton, showing up in uh, from you know Fresh Prince of Bel Air, showing up in Ticks. Mm. Like apparently it was a thing where these TV shows would kind of like loan out their stars to do to do like little movies. Little as like movies. you know, like as like a little like, uh, hey, uh, we'll we'll get this guy out of here for a few days. We need we need a break from freaking uh, Todd Bridges. Inter- I mean, different strokes is off the air by then. It been Was off it? for a couple. Yeah, it ended in eighty six. Oh God! And this is eighty eight, right? Well, so I don't yeah. think he was on a show then. No, he was just making his way in the world. Yeah, this, this is his first thing right after Different Strokes. Wow. He took a this, couple of years off. Sadly, this did not launch him into well, he, super fame. He could have been a ghost in the second movie if they made Twice Dead 2, Twice Deader. Oh. And he could have been the ghost helping out the kids. Oh, my goodness. That could have been great. That could have been amazing. Uh, let's see if there's any trivia on this beautiful film. Uh, let's see, a Todd, Do- <laughs> it says in the trivia, it says Todd Bresnahan, our Scotty buddy, he did almost all of his own stunts. <laughs> Ooh, 
fancy. Oh, God. Cast as siblings, Tom Bresnahan and Jill Whitlow tried to suppress their attraction during filming, but they wound up dating after production wrapped. I mean, this is a film that has like a weird energy between them on screen, like brother sister yes. energy. Uh, like there are films that do this with siblings who are very close in age and teenagers that it is not quite so creepy as this one is. Yeah. There's like a lot of stroking and like waking up, uh, uh, like comforting each other after one wakes up. It's a little, it's a little much. Yeah, dude, I'm ready. I got some trivia here. It's going to blow your mind. You ready for this? <laughs> yeah, I'm ready. The title song credited to the band poor saint christopher was mm -hmm. written and performed by christopher burgard aka silk aka zip oh. the gang leader with backing vocals provided by tom bresnahan are you kidding <laughs> that's what it says that is so in the cool. freaking trivia dude <laughs> oh my gosh all right so i mean you are playing this song right i'm now. gonna play it in the hopes that it, it's not like on record somewhere like hopefully there's not some uh freaking cd baby account that has the <laughs> listen that's the only way christopher burgard is making money these days is right? from the, the royalties on that song so. i'll totally play it let's let's chance it let's see what happens So, uh, Jeffrey, how do you like this one? Oh, I adore it. Um, it's a, it's such a novel concept. Um, for, for one, it's, it's a home invasion movie kind of after like the seventies home invasion movies were a thing, um, into the eighties here. And before, obviously they, they've really picked back up in the last decade or so, but it's a home invasion movie with a twist because the, the gang is home invading a haunted house <laughs> and the, the fucking haunted house spooks them. It spooks them real good. Uh, I love, I love everything about this movie. Um, I, I agree that it is, it is somewhat by the numbers in the beginning. Um, yeah. but I love those numbers. And then when it makes the turn, I, I just could not be more pleased. Uh, it is equal parts goofy and, uh, I think suspenseful. Like, yeah. I, one of the reasons why I love these sort of, uh, gang movies is that, um, the suspense is always pretty visceral. It's like, what the fuck are they going to do? This gang, this gang of, of weird assorted ruffians. There's just no stopping them. Um, well, there is stopping them and it just takes a, uh, a depression era actor and magician to do it. So yeah, this is a great, great film. Uh, I, I, I want to eat it with a, a sleepy pizza pie and drift off into a chloroform induced <laughs> <laughs> nightmares a chloroform pizza <laughs> <laughs> how do you like this one richard oh i love it i was literally making a list of films i wanted to watch uh, in the in the coming year because um you know there's always these little weird um like when did i buy that why haven't i watched that what the hell is this movie in your collection and one of the movies I wrote on that list was Twice Dead. I was definitely going to watch Twice Dead, knowing nothing about it other than what I saw on the cover and saw, you know, oh, Todd Bridges is in it. Whatever. I'll watch this. <laughs> and we were uh, throwing some titles back and forth about what should we watch or what should we cover? What should we cover? And uh, you asked about Twice Dead. I was like, well, that's it. That's what we're doing because I was just going to watch it. Um, but yeah, I love this. I can't wait to show this to somebody. <laughs> Um, my pal Jason is, a, he's like the perfect mark for movies like this because I always tell him, okay, here's what we're going to watch. Don't look it up on your phone. Mm -hmm. He always looks shit up on his phone. I'm like, no, stop it. Stop it. So this one, I'm going to just spring on him at the last second and just tell him, oh man, it's just this amazing movie. It's like super intense <laughs> thriller, dude. Like, oh man. And then just watch his face as it slowly begins to freaking <laughs> unfold before him. Uh, but yeah, the, the, by the number stuff was just, just me searching. Cause folks, every time Jeffrey picks a movie, it is 
insane. And this one just didn't, wasn't kicking in quite yet. And then the little details are fun. Now that I'm looking back on them, like, all this yeah. shit's crazy. All this is weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But man, as soon as the freaking special effects came into play with, with Scotty and <laughs> his sister teaming up, because it's kind of intimated that she's sort of responsible for like the tubing of the, like the setting up of the, the blood, like the actual mechanism that splatters the blood. But Scotty's the one who put too much blood in. Ugh, Scotty. And I'm like, oh, I love it. But no, this was this was a madcap, bonkers fucking movie. <laughs> uh, I'm really curious to see that scene you're talking about with the uh, the Blu-ray, that the one they had to restore from the VHS. Yeah, um, I was looking I, at it, and it. I mean, it was like a standard Death Source, so it just looks it looks slightly strange, and it gives like a really surreal quality to this uh, post post kitten killing uh, uh, terrorizing scene. Yeah, luckily it was a fake cat, but you know that if you don't like animal violence in movies, even if you, if you don't like stage stuff, even if you can't handle that, that's that would be that scene a bit might be a a deal breaker for some <laughs> folks because it's uh, it ain't good. I mean, it's it's a cat that it's a cat it's a fake cat that looks worse than the uh, Salem cat from Sabrina the Teenage Witch, <laughs> and I'm talking about the sitcom here. Oh, it's like when Liette and I were watching Sleepwalkers, and they had all those dead cats <laughs> hanging from the tree. I was like, oh, that's uh, messed up, dude. Look at the trivia. Oh, they re- they used real cats for that. Really? Oh my god! Thanks, fuckers. Jesus. <laughs> I'm sure they're all. I'm sure they all died of natural causes and signed their signed their permission uh-huh. to use their corpses. Yeah, I bet. But no, yeah, this this is great. I highly recommend Twice Dead to anybody. This is this is a good time movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, that's it. We did it. Beautiful. It. This is my notes. This is my notes. I'm flapping my notes around, folks. Thank you for listening. Thank you for hanging out, Jeffrey. Thank you for using all of your chloroform on me while we were doing this episode. Thank you for buying me this pizza. <laughs> uh, eat it right before bed. Yeah, I'm gonna down <laughs> this forty ounce, um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna shove this pizza in my mouth, and I'm going to um, turn on my electric blanket. It should go great. <laughs> and now everybody go have sex on their parents' bed. This is the Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doomedmoviethon.com for the archives. If that's still not enough, go to at doomedmoviethon on Twitter. You can write in to Hello, This is the Doom Show. Use the email doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. Doom Show episodes are available on record and 8-track cassette.